All right, in this lesson, we're going to have an introduction to if statements by doing a superhero lookup program. So similar to visual, uh, the Vivaldi Four Seasons, where we clicked buttons to update the content of the page, this time I want to do like an input element, like a search bar type thing, where you type it in and then say, if the input is this, show this superhero, that kind of stuff. Okay, so there is some start code for this. If you open up that start code, it's basically that web development template that we had, except I added a folder with images for Black Panther, Hulk, Spider-Man, and Thor. Hopefully those are your super favorite superhero characters. Anyway, they're also Lego guys, because that's fun. All right, um, so let's work with this template. We'll start with the HTML. We'll give this our title, superhero lookup. And that can also be used for my H1. I'm gonna keep this website really simple. Um, it'll just have a title, and then let's have a paragraph that'll have our search. Um, so why don't we just go input ID equals superhero, um, type equals text. Wonderful. And then maybe behind that input element, we'll have a button. Sure, a button with the ID search. And this button will say search. Cool. Let's do an HR. Um, actually, let's do an HR above and below that search bar. Um, we'll add a comment here saying my search bar. And then this will be my, you know, main display. And all I want to do on my main display is let's have a div. And inside of that div, we'll place an image where the source is equal to, um, I guess we could, st uh, what do I want to do? Maybe we'll just leave it blank to start off with. No, let's start off with a superhero already there. Let's start off with uh, Spider-Man. He's one of my favorites. Um, and yeah, let's just leave that. Well, we should do alt. Now we're going to change the source of this image. So I'm just going to say superhero. And I'm not going to specify the width and the height. Because why am I not going to do that? Because each of these images, they have all the same height of 600, but they have different widths. So, you know what? Maybe I will specify the height of 600. Um, I remember reading somewhere that if you specify width or height, it does help the page load because it knows, the browser knows what size of container to store the image in. I don't know if I don't specify the width, I don't know if this does actually help, but whatever. Well, let's just try going with this 500 pixels and height is 600 pixels. See what that does. Okay. Um, and then I load my JavaScript, main.js. Main.js just says alert. We'll get rid of that. And my style sheet just does some basic centering stuff. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Save that all. I'm going to go live. And okay, that's not bad, except let's get rid of my download bar there. That helps a little bit for the height. And let's do a text align center just to get everything centered. So I can just apply that to my body and that should, that looks better. Okay, so the idea is I should now be able to type in Thor and click search and the picture of Thor should show up. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I also want one more image. I just thought of this now. Um, what if I have um, a, something that doesn't exist? I want an image of just like a question mark. So let's find that question mark. Wonderful images for question mark. Look at all these things. This one looks cool. Or maybe the one in the circle, I don't care. Or maybe, you know, let's do this one. Cool, except that it has the vector stock stuff. All right, I could spend hours picking a question mark image, but let's not. Okay, so let's just use this one here with the circle. I'm gonna save image as, and I'm in my images. It's called download, that's lame. Question dash mark hyphen mark dot PNG. Okay, good. All right, anyway, so that question mark will show up if I don't, if I search for da or if I search for Squirrel Girl, 
Oh no, sorry, my class told me about Squirrel Girl. I didn't know who Squirrel Girl was. Apparently that's actually a thing. Anyway, um, let us go. I forget what I'm doing now because I got distracted. Okay, let's go to our main.js and we'll add a title here. Superhero Lookup. And the first thing I want to get is uh, event listener. So document uh, get element by ID. We're going to look for that element, the button with the ID search. And we'll add an event listener. Click. And then we'll go for a, um, we'll go set superhero. All right. So that set superhero is going to be my um, event function. So function set superhero. Beautiful. Okay. And the main goal of this function is to um, set the main image based on the user's search input. Right? So the first thing I need to do is get the user input. So let, uh, let super name be assigned, document uh, get element by ID. I forget the name of the ID. This input element has the ID superhero. Awesome. So get element by ID superhero dot value. Right? So JavaScript will search the document for the element with this ID and get its value and store that into this variable. Sweet. Now let's test the variable name. So this is where we need to use our if statements, right? I know that I can set the image. Did I give my image an ID? I did not. Let's give this uh, ID super image, super IMG. Okay. I know that I can go document .get element by ID super IMG and go dot source equals and then give it a new source. So for example, images slash question mark dot, I forget what it was, question dash mark dot PNG, right? I know that I can do this and let's, let's test this just to see if it works or not. So whenever I click this button now, it'll change it to the question mark. Okay, cool. But I need to control, well, what, what image do I want to change it to, right? So that's what I need to do is using an if statement. The basic structure of an if statement in JavaScript is you use the keyword if, open and close parentheses, open and close braces. And what goes inside of the parentheses is essentially a test. Um, it's a condition that we check to see if it's true. So if something is true, do the code that's in between these two brackets. So to usually the tests that we do use comparison operators, we can do things like equals, so you can do double equals or triple equals. I'll talk about the difference of those later. Um, you can do greater than, you can do less than, less than or equal to, things like that. So I'm going to check this variable name. I'm going to say, hey, if super name double equals quotations uh, black panther, Right, so if super name equals Black Panther, then I'm going to do something. Well, I'm going to copy this and paste it, and let's uncomment or comment that out for a second. And I want to change this to Black Panther .png. Okay, so this code inside of the if statement will only run if this condition is true. Okay, that's pretty cool. So for example, now if I typed in Thor and hit search, nothing happens, right? You'd think, oh, shouldn't it change the image to Black Panther? No, because super name does not equal Black Panther. So let's test this. If I go Black Panther and hit search, ta-da, Black Panther shows up. Okay, awesome. This is huge because we now have the, the ability to control what code runs, right? This line of code doesn't always run. It only runs if this condition is true. Okay, um, a common thing to do with if statements is you can do, uh, this is a, called a unary if statement. 
a unary just for one, right? It's a single, if this is true, do this. You can do a binary if statement by adding an else here. So you just go else and then open and close braces. This is binary because there's basically two blocks of code, right? If this is true, do this, else do what's inside of here. And that's where I'm going to take this question mark and put it in here. Because basically I can say, hey, if it's Black Panther, show Black Panther. Otherwise, give me a question mark. Cool. Now this is called a binary. I have two possibilities. If I do Black Panther, that first condition should be true. If I type in anything else, it gives me the question mark. Um, but unfortunately, it'll also give me the question mark for valid things like Thor. Oh, shucks. Um, Black Panther is okay but what if i did black panther all ca capitals Ooh, question mark you can't find it okay so you know what for now i'll talk about case insensitive stuff maybe well maybe we'll do that now i'm running out of time here though you know before i do that let's first add the other superheroes and the way we can do that is by doing a chained selection statement so this is a binary and if else we can actually insert into here else if like so open and close like that sorry so if this is true do this else if this is true do this i'm just going to go super name is equal to thor then copy and paste and we'll go thor.jpg and we can chain as many of these as we want. Else if, right, and I can go like so. Um, else if what? Super name is equal to bum, 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 who's left Hulk. Then I'll paste that and we'll change this to Hulk. Dot JPEG. Oh, and I'm missing my favorite. So we'll go else if. Um, what am I testing here? Super name is equal to spider. Oops, Spider Man. Then paste and change that to Spider Man dot JPEG. Okay, and you can put as many of these else ifs as you want. It basically says, hey, if this is true, I'm going to do this block of code and I skip the rest. But if it's not true, then I'll go to the else and check if this is true. If it's true, I'll do this. Otherwise, I'll, sk I'll skip the rest. Otherwise, I'll check. And it just keeps checking each one. And if none of these if statements are true, it'll just finally do this else, which is the question mark. Okay, let's test this out. So it starts off as Spider-Man. So let's try Thor and hit search. Awesome. We'll go Hulk. Great. Let's go Black Panther. Cool. Um, I forget already. Do we have Superman? Supernam? Superman? Hit search. Ah, oh, they don't know who Superman is. Okay, so when I type in Superman, it tests this and says, nope, it's not Black Panther. So else, nope, it's not Thor. It's not Hulk. It's not Spider-Man. So finally, it goes down to this question mark. Okay. That is an introduction into if statements. Again, we can do just a simple if statement, right? Just one if statement. We can do an if else to make it binary, or we can do this chain selection statement, if, else, if, else, if, else, if, with as many of these else ifs as you'd like. And then the final else at the end is kind of the catch-all. If none of these if statements are true, it'll do whatever's in the else. All right. Hopefully that made sense. Feel free to add some more superheroes to this if you want. Um, I'll teach you, actually, I'm going to do a part two of this video, I think, to talk about um, making the input checking a little bit better, make it case insensitive, maybe accept some different answers, things like that. Um, but anyway, for now, hopefully that made sense. Take care, and I'll see you in part two of this video. All right, see ya.